Hi, hello and welcome back to F1 Challenge VB. My name is Mephisto and our journey through the history of Formula 1 continues today with the fifth round of the 1969 season, the French Grand Prix. It was held on the 6th of July, it had 13 entries, all of them took part in the race but 4 ended up retiring. The race consisted of 38 laps completed in 1 hour, 56 minutes and 47 seconds. Stewart started the race from pole with Holm in 2nd, who ended up finishing the race in 8th. Rint was 3rd on the grid, but fell ill and had to retire on lap 23. X started from 4th on the grid, Beltois 5th and Amon started the race from 6th, but retired on lap 31 due to an engine blowout. Stewart drove a fantastic race to win the French Grand Prix from Beltois who moved up from 5th and crossed the line 57.1 seconds after Stewart. X moved up one place to finish third. He was 57.3 seconds behind. McLaren climbed from seventh into fourth. He was one lap down. Vic Alford climbed from tenth into fifth. He was one lap down as well. And Graham Hill, who started the race from eighth, rounded off the top six. He was also one lap down. Stewart proved to be the fastest man of the race, posting a time of three minutes, 2.7 seconds on lap 27. Greetings from the fantastic Clermont-Ferrand circuit where a lap starts off with a short sprint into turn one, a medium speed left-hander that takes us onto the longest straight on the track, which ends with turn two, a medium speed right-hander. A bit later on, we come for a fast left-hander, be mindful of the wall on the exit. Later still, we come into a medium speed left-hander that leads immediately into a tight 180 degree cambered right-hand hairpin. This is followed by a series of slow to medium speed corners. About halfway around the lap, we make our way through a blind medium speed right-hander. Be extremely careful as there is a huge drop-off on the outside. After a series of medium to fast corners, we arrive into a slow 180 degree left-hand hairpin. Shortly after that, we come into another 180 degree left-hand hairpin. This is followed by a 180 degree right-hand hairpin, then another 180 degree left-hand hairpin, followed immediately by a medium speed right-hander. Next is a fast left-hander that leads into the final corner of the track Track, a tight right hand hairpin that brings us around onto the main straight and that is a lap around the Clermont-Ferrand circuit. And here we are in qualifying for the first Grand Prix coming around to set our first and only qualifying lap a 318.676 which pu puts us into a provisional pole. I'm pretty sure I will not be able to keep that as I go a little bit wide through turn one there but again that doesn't matter because this is the only lap I decided to put in because the lap is quite long and tedious to do but anyway here are the previous french grand prix winners it's been a very very long time since we won a french grand prix i think we only won one once or twice in the french grand prix so hopefully today things will change but who knows anyway we have bruce mclaren on pole with graham hill in second third is jackie stewart followed by jean-pierre beltois in fourth fifth is denny holm and rounding off the top six is jackie x then in 7th we have Andy Higgs, very well done, and John Surtees is starting from 8th. In 9th we have Jochen Rindt followed by Brabham in 10th, 11th is Vic Alford, 12th Peter de Klerk, 13th Sylvia Moser, 14th Alpes, 15th is Pierce Carriage, Joe Sifford starting from 16th, 17th Johnny Servos Gavin, 18th Sam Tingle, 19th Jackie Oliver, Derek Bell 20th, in 21st we have Chris Amon, 22nd Pedro Rodriguez, 23rd John Love, 24th John Miles, 25th Basil Van Ruyen, Joe Bonner 26th, 27th Bill Brack and John Quartz is starting from 28th. So those are the, that is the grid lineup for today's race. Hopefully, again, it will be a good race for Andy, but, you know, that's only hope at this point. We don't know until we actually get to the end of the race. If we get to the end of the race. And we are off. That was a pretty decent start. Didn't lose any positions. Didn't gain any either. As we come through turn one. I tried to get around X there. But he kind of blocked me. So here we are coming on to the longest straight of the track. Get behind Jackie X. Make use of his slipstream. Pull to the side. And can we overtake him? into turn two yes we can and that's six we're already in the points which is very very good we're now looking at Denny Holmes McLaren hopefully we'll be able to overtake him as we take a look at a replay of the start very good camera angles there uh, very helpful to see important things as we come out of 
turn one once again i wasn't able to gain any positions but we didn't eventually gain one position as we reached turn one and and we have some replays first of john miles who has a clutch problem and as you can see he's kind of stuck there on the grid well you can't really see him but you see the most important part the trucks on which the cars arrived anyway there's a replay of bill brack and i think he crashed into something i saw a wheel fly off but i can't really say because the trucks were more important and we hear it's a replay of joe sifford who does something and he is out of the race i can't see because there are trees and here's a replay of johnny servos gavan once again i can't really see what's happening but uh, i'm sure something interesting is happening although we're not supposed to see that we uh the trees are mo more important than what's happening Anyway, we're still here on lap 1 and I just managed to get around Jack and Denny Holm for 5th, however, he cut the track and overtake both myself and X, so we drop back down to 6th, then I overtake Jean-Pierre Beltois and we are now in 5th. So, that's quite nice, can we overtake Denny Holm as well? Yes, we can and that is 4th, fantastic, and I meant to say uh, Jean-Pierre Beltois, not Jackie X previously a little bit later on we overtake Jackie Stewart for third we're still on the opening lap can we overtake Bruce McLaren who's right in front of us not quite but a few seconds later we do manage to get around him and that is second already and the lap is still we're still on the opening lap a little bit later on we come into this left hand hairpin we caught up to Graham Hill and we overtake him that's the lead of the race just before we finish lap one that's absolutely fantastic it would be even better if we could somehow keep the lead not crash not do anything stupid as we slowly pull away from jackie stewart who's in second place at the moment there's a gap of about 6.5 seconds as we take a look at a replay of chris amon oh and we get a glimpse of the menu how interesting anyway this is chris amon i'm not quite sure what happened but it looks like he crashed into an invisible wall which completely destroyed his car so that is the end of his race and here is a replay of John Surtees uh, once again crashing into what I think it's a an invisible wall and well that is the end of Surtees' race as well lap 4 now and we continue to pull away from Jackie Stewart we are almost 40 seconds ahead of him so doing very good progress here as we take a look at the replay of John Love, who goes wide and crashes into the invisible wall. There's smoke coming out of, smoke and fire coming out of the rear of his car now. So that was quite a violent crash. And here is a replay of Sam Tingle, who, I don't know, goes somewhere off to a better place, probably. I don't know, but he is out of the race, obviously. Lap 6 now, and the gap to between ourselves and Jackie Stewart is now over one minute so that's pretty good we have a lot of breathing space if we do something stupid as we take a look at a replay of Jokan Ren coming through this right hander then the left hander and then through the the other right hander there's a car uh, backing up and Jokan Ren crashes into that car I saw some wheels fly so they probably fell off of Rin's car as we take a look at a replay of Jackie X coming through the, the same section of the track and he goes wide uh, spins a little bit slides around and well let's better look at the trees in front of us not at the action because the action is not important right guys anyway lap 7 here and we are still pulling away from Jackie Stewart he's now almost one and a half minutes behind as we take a look at a replay of um i didn't quite catch who it was it was pedro rodriguez who has a suspension problem so he is out of the race as well now lap 10 and the gap to jackie stewart is now over two minutes so now obviously we have more than enough reading space anyway here is a, a replay of peter de clerk who has smoke coming out of his engine, pulls to the side, and that is the end of his race. And now, lap 13, we're just started the final lap, and we lapped Jackie Stewart, so obviously, we are doing very, very well in this race. 
as we now come around to finish lap 13 and win the French Grand Prix that's absolutely fantastic that's the third win this season which obviously is very very good and that's one step closer to finishing the completing the goal of 50 Grand Prix wins at the by the end of the season and here is Andy Higgs coming around at the end of the race to set the fastest lap so I did in fact set the fastest lap on the final lap as we take a look at the standings uh, Higgs first Stewart second third Beltois fourth Brabham fifth McLaren and Denny Holm is sixth and here are the retirements quite a few people retired from this race so that is that but you know Overall, that was a very good French Grand Prix, at least for Andy Higgs and the people who managed to complete the race. I'm quite happy and again, we, with this, we move one step closer to achieving our challenge goal of winning 50 championship races during Andy's career. Only three more to go and we can accomplish that. And we might just be able to do it. And we might even be able to win the championship, I don't know. That's probably wishful thinking, but... Anything could happen, so here's hoping, right? Anyway, let's move on, and here are the career statistics. This was Andy's 178th Grand Prix, his best start is from first, has 17 pole positions, has set 31 fastest laps, his best finishes in first, has completed 107 races, 83 of them in the points, has won 47 Grand Prix, 4 at the Indianapolis 500, 6 in Monaco, has 8 championships under his belt, has scored a total of 560 points, has retired 71 times, has experienced 3,680 out of 4,630 laps, has 8 bronze trophies, 17 silver trophies, 47 gold trophies, and as an extension, 47 podiums. And here is a quick look at the championship standings. Andy Higgs extending his lead, Jackie Stewart, Jackie X, and Jean-Pierre Beltois sharing second, Bruce McLaren fifth, Jack Brabham sixth, the last person with points is Mario Andretti down in 15th and bringing up the bottom of the driver standings is Richard Atwood down in 30th. So those are the drivers, let's now move on to the constructors where we have Pete Lovely Volkswagen Incorporated extending their lead with Motor International and Rabo Motor Racing Development sharing second, fourth our Gold Leaf Team Lotus, fifth Bruce McLaren Motor Racing, sixth Frank Williams Racing Cards, the last team with points are Scuderia Ferrari down in ninth, and bringing up the bottom of the constructor standings are Paul Stites Racing down in 18th. So that was the French Grand Prix, once again a very good result for both Andy and Volkswagen. This is turning out to be quite a good season for Andy, and if things continue to go the way they are, uh, we might actually be able to A win another championship which would be absolutely fantastic and a very nice way to end Andy's career especially after the, those horrible last couple of seasons and we might just be able to also achieve the goal of winning 50 Grand Prix during a career or rather during Andy's career. We only need to win three more races so that shouldn't be all that difficult but you know when it comes to this game you can never know. But that is pretty much it for this video and there's not much more to say about any of this. I'm Obviously I'm quite happy for how things are turning out this season but there's still a long way to go until the end so we need to or at least I aka Andy will have to concentrate on doing the best and trying to well score points at the very least. But that is the end of this video, don't forget to vote for next season's team and don't forget to vote for a name for Andy's son and that's pretty much it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video, thank you all so much for watching and as always, stay sharp.